All right, we're jumping straight into this one. Last season, there were some absolutely heavy hitters. We got you photoball just completely flexing. The tax evasion money, my dress up darling, no, our dress up darling. And of course, let's not forget Attack on Titan Final Season Episode 12, Chapter 4, Remix, Second Gig, Part 2.1, You Cannot Rumble. These were some big titles, but this season looks like we got way more to choose from. Spy X Family is starting, Kaguya Summer is back, we got like 10 new different shows that have genuinely caught my interest. It is looking good, it is looking bright, it is looking, oh, oh hello, what's this? <laughs> You should do ballet. Give me one good reason I should do ballet. Well, what do you think? You've heard of Daddy Long Legs. Well, get ready for Mummy Long Necks. Right, I know a bunch of you are gonna skip this because la dee da, it's an anime about ballet, but damn, does this look like it has potential. Coming straight from Studio Mapper, just flexing their animation, the dancing scenes are bursting with life and energy that absolutely engrossed me. It honestly looks gorgeous with zero CG in sight. This has the making of a great sports anime mixed with Billy Elliot. But I also remember what happened when they did Yuri on Ice, so we'll have to wait to see if they're able to maintain this fantastic quality throughout. Until then, just look at these necks! So, so no mama takaku, 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 But before we get to our next show, a quick word from our sponsor. Hi there. I couldn't help but notice that beautiful head of hair you have. Don't you want to make sure you have it for as long as possible? Well, thankfully, today's episode is sponsored by Keeps. They offer clinically proven treatments to combat the symptoms of hair loss that gets delivered straight to your door. By me. I'll do it myself if you keep your lovely hair. Don't lose your hair. Don't you dare lose your hair. Don't lose that hair. Disclaimer. Giguk will not actually deliver the product straight to your door. With Keeps, you can get quality, expert care without ever visiting a doctor, office, or pharmacy. And best of all, you can choose a routine that works for you. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of your hair, Keeps has got you covered. As someone who's gone through the Sasuke hair phase and the Yakuza hair phase, I gotta say, I love both looks, but I like having the choice of which one I want to look like. Dear God, please not let it be the Sasuke hair look again. You can easily subscribe to Keeps and get refill reminders so you'll never run low on the products you need to take care of your hair. Stop your hair loss today with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash giguk or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash giguk. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video. And with that said, Back to the video. Back in the sequel corner, we somehow got another season of Data Live, there's more Black Rock Shooter, Komi-san is still deciding whether talking is a good thing. <laughs> it's still bad. Shield Hero is still deciding whether slavery is a bad thing. <laughs> it's still good. Oh hey, more Kaguya Summer. <laughs> oh hey, more Isekai. Yeah! Alright, just hear me out. There are so many shows that use some self-aware meta twist on the isekai cliches that being meta has become cliche itself, because almost all of them just change some cheap element like, what if the protagonist was an OP for once? So it's rare when you see a show that's actually got some thought put into it. Here's a world where isekai is commonplace. In fact, so many people from Japan have been isekai'd there, they've made the ultimate isekai starter town. Japan too. So in this kind of world, what do you think would happen if we give a bunch of normal people superpowers and transport them to a fantasy world they have no investment in? Defeat the demon lord, save the world and respect women? Hell no, they're gonna fuck shit up, ruin things and then maybe respect women. So here the native inhabitants have needed to make an organization around assassinating people that have been isekai before they become a threat to the world. That's right, we're so bored of the isekai protagonist that we have now made a show focused around killing them. Is that like a personal attack or something? The show is hella meta but not in a way that seems gimmicky or cheap. The tropes we are so familiar with have been used to shape the world, and it feels like real thought has been put into how it was built from the ground up. This is one of the most intriguing concepts I've seen for Isekai in a while,
while, and I'm excited to see where this one goes. But that's not the only one. We got a guy who wakes up in an Atoma game who was forced to complete 100%, so now he's in an IRL New Game Plus. Except he absolutely hated the game with a fiery passion, so he just uses his knowledge to fuck up all the shit for all the characters he hates in the game. And also, there's Max. Actual 2D Max in an isekai. I wasn't lying when I said before that there is more variety in new and unique isekai concepts now more than ever. Oh hey, it's Overlord. <clears throat> Anyway, as I was saying. Tokyo City Esperion FC. Use Kantoku, Fukuda Tatiada, Barsa, Madorino, Manchester, Miram, Tatakitsus. May you f what, mate? You think you're better than United City and Barca, mate? Really, it's for fucking my mate. Sterling's left foot has got more talent than your entire country, mate. Fucking my grandma can dribble the ball better than you, mate. Mate, you ain't no Cristiano fucking Ronaldo, are you? Go fuck off, mate. I'll fuck you up. You fucking little b. Finally, there's potential for a modern good football anime. None of this futsal shit, none of this American rugby shit, just some good old football. If there's one studio I trust with sports anime, it's Production IG, and football is the one sport I really want a new great anime for, because maybe for once, maybe, just maybe, I'll be able to wrap my head around the fucking offside rule. Seems like this is going to be on the more realistic side of things, but I'm definitely interested to see what kind of special anime moves these players will get. <gasps> He's gonna use his secret technique. The secret technique? Zinedine Zidane! Oi, mate! You're flying low! What? The cucumber has left the salad! What? Men are from Mars and women can see your penis! What? You look like you're going to a JoJo fan meetup. Oh my god, my flies are undone. From Komi-san can't communicate, we now have Aharon san is indecipherable. Another feel-good comedy about a cute little girl who can only verbalize herself by speaking fluent ASMR. Now the new waifu category popping up I like to call professional mouth breathers. You know, with the gimmick that her voice is so quiet that not a single person could even hear her, I don't know why they didn't just go ahead and call this a silent voice. Wait. There's also a Super Sentai romantic comedy where a Red Ranger fell in love with a villainess and they have to continue their relationship in secret by pretending to be enemies. It's your typical standard star-crossed lovers with a tokusatsu twist, you know, with the gimmick that they're dating but also have to pretend that they're in combat with each other. I don't know why they didn't just go ahead and call this Love is War for Fuck. There's an anime where a poor girl accidentally joins an agency and becomes the manager of a bunch of stuck-up guys who are popular but also complete arseholes. I believe the agency was called Geeks Plus. We got another Demon Academy wannabe. I don't know why these reincarnated demon lords are even trying when Anos Voldigode already exists. I mean, look, we got Giga Chad Anos. Beats a man to death with his heartbeat, collects a harem immediately, yeets a castle into Narnia, and even melts a Cinderace's heart in two episodes. And then you have this guy, reincarnated demon lord, most powerful being on earth. Can't speak to girls. At this rate, I wouldn't be surprised if he changed his pronouns from he, him, to just he. Cause he'll never be him. Here's a wild card for you. We got a bloody musical anime this season around girls who can heal people with the power of singing. Which made me realize I don't think we've had a musical anime before. Characters will just randomly break out into song, instruments magically start playing out of someone's ass. I'm not typically a musical guy, but I was impressed. Though thinking about it, I don't know how good for my health it would be if I just went to the doctor for a headache and they started busting out I dreamed a dream. Not enough healing for you? No worries, as we've got cute little baby ghosts to help you get through a tough work day. You know, I would call this the perfect cure for depression until I realized that this is just Senko-san. Dead baby edition. Okay, I gotta be honest. When I saw the trailer for this and manga readers absolutely hyped this up, I was prepared for the possibility that I could be selling all of my Marin stocks and going all in on the Shikimori train. This was the potential new face of best girl, but now... Look at these diamond hands, baby! We've got a girlfriend who's proving to be the most effective anti-isekai weapon developed thus far, protective of her precious little boyfriend. I mean, just look at this guy. Tell me this isn't the face of a man only a peg could love. This is another show in the recent trend of anime looking at single weebs dead in the eye and going, You will never get this, you will never get this, la 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 la. And look, this is a cute little slice of life, but do people really think she has a shot of taking the crown from our queen of best girls when a gimmick is just basically, I can be your angle? Or your devil. Maybe this will impress me more as the series goes on, but my current forecast is to keep hodling on Marin Weebs, because it looks like there isn't going to be a clear best girl this season. <laughs>
All right, sell everything right now. You want me to sell everything right now? Right now. All right, here's the big one. Shonen Jump just seems to be in a league of its own right now. Every time a new title gets adapted, not only is it great, but without fail, always jumps up to become the most prominent anime of its season. And Spy X Family seems to be doing exactly that. This show has quickly become the talk of the anime community, and I can absolutely see why. You got a masterfully done comedy involving the most dysfunctional family of all time with a spy dad, an assassin mom, and a cute little girl who can read minds, taking place in the completely fictional city of Berlin. Man, I can't wait for them to go to Londain, stop off at Buda Pizant before they fly off to a can't believe it's not Paris so they can end the journey in Amsterdam, Daniel. The setup is absolute chaos, but so far it's delivered in almost every single aspect from comedy to badass moments to scenes with Anya. Just any scenes with Anya. All scenes with Anya. Just give me more Anyas. We need more Anyas. I'll take 10 of your finest Anyas. Give me your entire stock of Anyas. This one is looking like the full package and with Studio Wits and Cloverworks taking the helm for this one, this is a definite must watch for every anime fan out there. Wait a minute, where do I recognize that room from? Oh no. Ah uh, yes, another seasonal anime death game called... called... Squad Game. I was expecting this one to be some King's game so bad it's good level of trash, but it's actually half decent. These aren't just mindless death games. The amount of game theory potential here makes this an entertaining watch. There's a group of friends working together to decrease the substantial debt they are sharing, but of course, there's a snake in the group they gotta weed out. And you know what that means. There's only one animal that can kill a snake. A long goose? <laughs> Cute girls do real estate. Now here's a concept where I thought, what the fuck is the target audience for this show? Who's out there fantasizing about owning real estate in a fantasy world? Then I realized that this entire show probably took less time to write, produce, and animate than it does to actually get a house in Final Fantasy XIV. I quit hearing. I remember a few seasons ago when Realist Hero aired and I was just like, oh hey, a kingdom management anime. That's a pretty original idea. This is now the third one in two seasons. And I love it. I think I found my new guilty pleasure genre, because it's like watching a new playthrough of Civilization. Except I can just watch an entire season of these anime faster than it would take to set up and complete a single game of Civ 6. <laughs> Mate, that's literally what a pro golfer does. Look, I'm just gonna say it. Golf is boring to watch. It is just not a fun spectator sport. That is, unless you add cute anime girls, Mario Golf special abilities, a fucking underground golf gambling syndicate. This girl just hit a drive through a fucking moving train. This is golfing in the Happy Gilmore universe and it is better for it. Birdie Wing might actually do the impossible. Make golf fun to watch. This is surprisingly an anime original coming from Studio Sunrise, which is so out of their ballpark because unless you told me, there was absolutely no way I could have known that this was a Studio Sunrise made show. Gumbra. I stand corrected. Trust nobody. Not even yourself. Trust nobody. Not even your shelf. Crust nobody. Not even your elf. Sus nobody. <laughs> Summertime Render. Now this is looking like one of the most intriguing anime of the season, being some kind of supernatural murder mystery. You got a bit of ReZero, you got a bit of Higarashi, you got a bit of Cicadas. Actually, a lot of Cicadas. Did I mention this anime was set in the summer? Can you tell that this anime was set in the summer? It is way too early to tell how this one's gonna play out, but trust me when I say, all it takes is exactly one episode to get you absolutely hooked just to find out what the hell is going on here. Zhuge Liang or Zhuge Kong Ming was one of the greatest Chinese strategists of the Three Kingdoms period, as well as a statesman, engineer. A premise this insane should not result in a show this good. Legendary ancient Chinese military strategist Zhuge Liang is reincarnated into modern day Shibuya, where he takes an interest in an aspiring singer and decides to become her manager where he uses war tactics from Romance of the Three Kingdoms to gain her followers and popularity so she can rise up to stardom. What the fuck? This is an absolute clusterfuck of ideas, yet somehow pulls everything together without feeling like Low XD, look at all this randomness, Lamau. The characters, the comedy, the charm, the opening that slaps harder than Will Smith on an Oscar night. It's been a long time since I've fallen for a show this fast, because behind all the insanity, there is real quality to be seen here. Somehow this has the best music production I've seen since Carol and Tuesday. If I had to put money on what would be the sleeper hit of the season, this would be it. But even if it isn't, you bet your ass I'm gonna be singing this opening with the boys all the way to the clubs.
Huh, a couple of cuckoos. I wonder what this is all about. A couple of cucks? I was just thinking the trashy harem romance genre needed something new to spice it up, and it looks like we found a new contrived setup to do just that. Forget childhood friends, forget teacher-student relationships, forget family-friendly polygamy. We now have separated at birth arranged marriages. Who needs Spy X family when we got Nisekoi X domestic girlfriend going on here? But you know, as much as I want to get behind this, I don't know. I just feel like it's missing some kind of secret ingredient to make this the dumpster fire I was looking for. So this is going to be anime of the year. Bang, bang. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you very much this month too. Alpha Sigma, Basil, Dysfunctional Degenerate, Elephal, Flabberwocky, Ivido, Jeff, Lavados, Pain Patchett, Pony Stark, Walter Geist VT, and everyone else on my Patreon for helping to support me for this month and making this video possible. Look at that guys, two main channel gigog video in two weeks. God, my videos are like London buses now, I guess. Oh, <laughs> it's cause I came back to England. Honestly, that wasn't really planned. I just worked on both videos at around the same time, so they finished at around the same time. Yeah, I know, I should probably schedule my workload better, eh? Honestly though, there was a lot to talk about this season, like way more than last season. I really want to give more interesting shows more time and maybe give more shows a bit more of a spotlight, but the first draft was already way longer than last season's first draft, and uh, I didn't have time to make this a 20 minute video. Anyway though, I hope you found something good to watch because there is a lot of interesting shit this season. That's it from me for today. I've been Giguk, and I'll see you all next time.